Hey guys, Probo1701 here, and today I'm going to share with you a list I wrote in late 2021 before Bungle Snowman's trailer. I wrote out a list of the order that they were going to finish out the animations through 2027. And in retrospect, it's so laughable now. It's so laughable and sad and ridiculous now that we know that for the time being, there's not going to be any more animations. A bottle of snowman is the last animation for now and for the foreseeable future. <clears throat> but at the time, you know, everybody was really riding the animation wave because we had gotten three animations in 2021, three different teams working on it with the Big Finish Creative 2D team, the Big Finish Creative 3D team that worked on Web of Fear, and then of course, BBC Studios. So we had like three teams working. We got three animations and everybody was hyping about getting three animations in 2022. <coughs> we were really riding this, you know, restoring missing episodes bandwagon. And so before all the wheels fell off and we skidded off the cliff and learned that there weren't going to be any more for now, I wrote out my list and it's ah, the hubris. Just the, the hubris and the arrogance behind this list astounds me looking back at it. Uh, the entitlement uh, that a Doctor Who fan can have and the entitlement I had through conceiving this list and writing this list. Uh, <laughs> when I look back at it, it just makes me shake my head. So I'm going to share with you my prediction of the order that they're going to complete the Doctor Who animations through 2027. I figured this would be a good laugh. I was digging through my notes when I found this. So in 2022, the three we're supposed to be getting, first one of course was Abominable Snowman. We knew it was coming, but we hadn't seen the trailer yet, so I didn't know who was animating it. Now I had BBC Studios animating it, because I think they're the best one of the three. Especially since uh, at the time, all I had to go by was Fury's animation from them, which we know I didn't like, and Galaxy Forest, which was a marked improvement, but uh, was still not as good as the stuff BBC Studios was putting out with, like, you know, Evil of the Daleks. So I had them doing Snowmen, which turns out I was wrong, and Big Finish Creative did it, and they did a really good job with it. Uh, next on the list, I had a special edition of Underwater Menace. Now, this was to be 3D animated, like Web of Fear, with its two missing episodes. But, I assume they would have improved on it, you know, much like how Big Finish Creative got better when they were doing their animations from Fury to Galaxy 4 to Abominable Snowman. I figured we would see those increments increase with the 3D ones. So, Underwater Menace might still not be the best, but it would be another good practice run for them after Web of Fear. And there would be some marked improvements, and it would at least get the story out uh, with some good visuals we could see. And then the third one would be The Savages. This one is the one I kept hearing we would probably get next for Hartnell. Apparently it's easy to do. It would sell well. It's Stephen's farewell story, so it's a companion departure. And that's the one I kept hearing about we'd probably get next would be The Savages. So I put The Savages as another easy Hartnell to do. And that would wrap up 2022. Moving into 2023, the 60th anniversary year, I had The Wheel in Space, which I, of course, had again by BBC Studios. Um, <clears throat> because again, I think that's a top tier project. Not only is it a Cyberman story, but it completes season five. And it's also a companion introduction with Zoe. And it's a season finale. So I figured they would have their top tier team working on it. So I figured this would be a big Finnish Studios production, especially considering how good the Macro Terror bonus scene, the 10 minutes of Wheel in Space animated from the Macro Terror release, how good that looked, because that looked phenomenally good. So I figured they would make that a top tier choice. Next on the list, I had Toy Maker, which I had the 2D division of Big Finish Creative doing. Because I think Toy Maker would make a good animated story, because especially if you didn't rigidly stick to the original episodes, if you took kind of a Macro Terra approach to it and really took some creative liberties, I think there's a lot you can do with that with all the different games that the toy maker has them going through. You can make them bigger and bolder and better and really impress on the screen. Uh, so I think that would be a really good story for that. Plus, you know, it's Michael Goff. I like anything with Michael Goff. Um, 
And then the 3D production I had for this season was the Highlanders, because uh, I've always understood the Highlanders would be tricky to do with traditional animation, so that, again, that seemed like another one. Uh, this would be, of course, the first story completely animated in 3D. And by now, this would be the third project that we're working on with 3D. I would assume they had gotten considerably better at it than they were at Web, having also had Underwater Menace to work on going by my list. So that it would be good enough to where people would be willing to pay money for it, a whole story animated in that style. And that would wrap up 2023 with season five being complete. <clears throat> then we move into 2024. This is a massive season right here, or a massive year. Uh, we would, first off, we would have the Smugglers. I would have Big Finish Creative, the 2D division of Big Finish Creative, do the Smugglers. Uh, the main reason I want the Smugglers is because it completes season four. Once, going by my list, that would be the only story left for season four. So season four would be complete and ready for a collection box set in the next year or two. So we would have the Smugglers done with Big Finish Creative, and that's a story I've always wanted to see anyway. Um, I would have the Space Pirates as well, and that would be the BBC Studios one, because again, I think with Space Pirates, you take a Macroterra approach and try to make it bigger and better to maybe make it more appealing to people, as Space Pirates has a terrible reputation. Though, how much Space Pirates relies on its visuals and how much it was just the script isn't good. Personally, I don't know. I've never listened to it. But uh, it has that bad reputation because apparently the, the one episode that exists, not much happens. It's a lot of filler. Um, so I'd rather get the good studio working on it. It's a Robert Holmes script. I want it in good care. Uh, and then, again, take a different approach with it. Maybe edit out some of the dead sounds where nothing's happening. And then uh, make the animation you know, take some liberties with it and kind of do your own thing with it and try to turn Space Pirates into perhaps an interesting visual story. And then the um, last one would be the Crusade in 3D, which we definitely know we're not getting now. But I always figured if they did the Crusade, it would have to be in 3D. I think they had talked about them, that themselves even, that the 3D was a possible avenue to do some of these more difficult to do stories like the Crusade because... The Crusade you couldn't really do with traditional animation. There's so many characters and so many costume changes, so many speaking parts. Uh, it just isn't cost effective, so they would have to do it in 3D. And by now, they would have gotten, again, a lot better at it. So, um, more than likely, they would have improved that. So, it would have looked considerably better than what we had in web. And that would, of course, Complete Crusade. So this season, you would complete season four, season six, and season two. Season four, season six, season two, all completed in 2024, all ready for their box sets in the collection range. Uh, 2025 is where we drop down to just two stories a year. We won't do three now, we'll do two. First off, Big Finish Studios does not release anything this year because you start them working on Master Plan. Master Plan is huge. One of the reasons Evil of the Daleks is so good is they spent... 18 months working on Evil of the Daleks, seven episodes. So now for 12 episodes, you need to give them time. So you give them a year off so they can work on Daleks Master Plan. And you have two releases. The first is by the 3D branch of Big Finish. You have them do Marco Polo. Because again, Marco Polo is another one I think probably had gonna have to be done in 3D, seven parts, massive story. Not quite sure how many characters are in it. I've only listened to the 30 minute cut down. But you do that in 3D, you get Marco Polo out, you complete season one. For the 2D branch, you do the Myth Makers. I would like that. I really liked the animation style for Galaxy 4. So I could see them using that anime style or the anime animation style for the Myth Makers. And I like the Myth Makers. I've read the Target novel. Plus, I just like the Trojan War. And of course, this is Vicky's departure story as well. <clears throat> so I would enjoy having the Myth Makers out. Again, it's a fairly famous episode, so I would like to see that. Uh, in 2026, you also have two stories. Now, the uh, Big Finish Creative 3D branch, they're done. That was the last story they needed to do was Marco Polo. They're done. Everything else is 2D from here on out. Uh, for Big Finish Creative, they released The Massacre. Uh, this is one I know a lot of people have wanted. We have Hartnell in dual roles, playing the Doctor and what the Abbot, I believe it is, in the story. 
And of course, I know Hartnell has a really famous speech in the final episode as well, so it'd be nice to put visuals to that. So we go ahead and get the massacre out. And then Big Finished uh, Studio, not Big Finished, uh, BBC Studios releases uh, part one of Dalek's Master Plan, because I do think you split Dalek's Master Plan into two releases. One, it's just so big, I think you could do that with that many episodes, especially if you're animating uh, Mission to the Unknown with it as well. And I think that's what you do here. You release uh, Mission to the Unknown animated with episodes one through six of Dalek's Master Plan. So seven episodes, and also that gives the team time to work on the second half of the story afterwards. They don't have to have it all out this year. They can get the first half out this year and then finish animating it, the rest of it to release next year. I would be willing, or I would have been willing, and I still would be willing to pay for it being split, to pay for two still books instead of one. I would be willing to do that for such a massive story. We're talking 13 episodes if you include Mission to the Unknown. That's a lot. That is a lot. So you go ahead and get that out. I know a lot of people figured Dalek's Master Plan would have to be animated in 3D, but I feel you could do it in 2D, which I think looks better, if you give them the time to do it and you split it into separate releases. And that's just personally what I would rather see. I'd rather have it in 2D and 3D, especially if BBC Studios is doing it, because I prefer their animation style. They're the A-team for me in the animations. And then in 2027, the final year, you get... Uh, Big Finish Creative um, releases Fury from the Deep, the special edition. And yep, that's where my entitlement was and my arrogance and my hubris right there. I firmly believed Fury from the Deep should get a special edition, much like Power of the Daleks did. You know, Power of the Daleks got a special edition, which really improved the animation. I mean, I was okay with the 2016 animation. I liked it, but I always watch the special edition animation now if I'm watching Power from the Daleks. It's just that much better. It's still not as good as, like, say, Evil or Macra, but it's still a lot better than the original release. I actually really enjoy the special edition of Power of the Daleks. It has pretty good animation. I like it. So I wanted that done with Fury from the Deep because I have beating a dead horse about Fury from the Deep's animation. I have gone on and on about it. It's just terrible. It is my... It objectively doesn't... It's objectively better than the Web of Fear animation, which is awful. But that's only one episode when watching Web of Fear. I can get over that. Whereas Fury from the Deep, it's all animated. And it's it's so bad. The Scooby-Doo-ness of it, the jankiness of the movements, uh, Troughton not moving the way Troughton should. They really, really corrected a lot of that in Abominable Snowman. I really like the Abominable Snowman animation. They really 180'd around with that while keeping a similar art style. <coughs> but Fury from the Deeps is bad, and I wanted a special edition. If they could make Fury from the Deep move and look more like Abominable Snowman, then the Fury from the Deep special edition would be good. And that's exactly where my fan entitlement was right there. I was like, not only are we going to get them all, but I'm going to get my Fury from the Deep Special Edition. Hopefully someone saw my videos and they were like, yes, this guy's right. We need a Fury from the Deep Special Edition. More than likely what happened was they saw my videos and go, man, this little prick sitting here complaining about the Fury from the Deep animation and like every other video. You know what? We're just not going to do it anymore. Tell the, B tell the BBC that BBC America is out. And it's all that guy's fault. And now I have all the eyes on me. All the Doctor Who fans are like, you son of a... <laughs> Luckily, I have a defense prepared. Oops. Oops is my... Um, oops is my excuse for everything. Yes. Something goes wrong, oops. Yes. I'm a highly responsible person. Anytime something goes wrong at work, they tell me I'm responsible. Um, and then the, of course, last one from BBC Studios is part two of Dalek's Master Plan being the final six episodes, episodes seven through 12. And I think that would be the perfect release to end the animations on, to have all of the animations would be part two of Dalek's Master Plan. That would be kind of the, uh, the coup de gras, you know, the, uh, the, the cherry on the top. That would be a perfect one to end on. And we would have had all of the animations completed by... 2027 going by that roadmap or if somewhere in there because again evil took you know 18 months if, if it did take a little longer than that we could have everything done by 2028 or 2029 say 2029 at the latest we could have had 
all of the animations done and all of the box sets could have had animations. That was my road map that I wrote somewhere in late 2021. I'd say between the release of Evil and the reveal of the Abominable Snowman trailer, so somewhere between April and November of that year. And looking back on it now, it's laughable, isn't it? It's so laughable. It's so optimistic. And it's, <laughs> I look back at it now and I'm just like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> So I'd like to know what do you think of this road map and uh, <laughs> how looking back at it, you're like, man. <laughs> We really were riding the wave of animations there. I'd like to know what you think of this video. So comment down below and let me know. Other things to do, click the like button and the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another video. I also have a Patreon if you like what I do and you would like to support what I do. There's a link to that down in the description below. I have several different cheers to ch uh, cheers, tiers to choose from. Uh, I want to give a shout out to two of my top tier patrons, the Fifth Doctor and Stephen Crane. I appreciate their continued support as I do the support of all of my patrons. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, I also have a P.O. Box. If there's anything you would like to send me, anything you think you might want me to review, that's down there as well, as is a link to my Amazon wish list, which I update regularly. Most importantly, though, thank you for watching.